Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. So right now travel trailers have become more popular than ever. People want to get away from other people with their families. But I really do believe there's this old thought that you need a pickup truck to tow a trailer and it's just not true. That's why today we've got this 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee and that Flagstaff E-Pro. And we will see how an SUV handles this load. There are a number of powertrains available here in the Grand Cherokee, but we have the 3.6 liter V6 making 295 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. Now in this package as it sits here today, this vehicle is rated to tow 6,200 pounds, which is a considerable amount. And you should know that this 3.6 is hooked into an eight speed automatic transmission. So now you know what the Grand Cherokee can tow, but what does this trailer weigh? Well, first of all, little tip, there's all always going to be a sticker just like this one on every travel trailer listing all of your capacity. So dry weight here, 1,413 kilograms. It's about 3,100 pounds. And then all of your capacities are here for your different liquid carrying tanks. And this sticker tells you how much gear you can put in the trailer. So it says that you can put 783 pounds of gear into this trailer. What does that all mean? Well, when you add this all up, fully loaded with all of those tanks full, all your stuff in here, you're looking at right about 4,000 pounds. And the other important part of the towing equation is the payload number. So here on our Grand Cherokee, we have 1,050 pounds worth of payload. And that means that if the trailer is weighing in at, let's say, 3,100 empty, because it is empty right now, that's putting 310 pounds of tongue weight on the vehicle. And you take that 310 and you subtract it from your overall payload, leaving us with roughly 700 pounds to put into this Grand Cherokee in people and cargo. Those are all numbers you have to make sure add up before you hit the road with any type of big trailer. So backing in, the Grand Cherokee does have a guidance line for your hitch, but that's about it. No zoom button, no other views, nothing like that. So hooking up this Grand Cherokee is fairly easy. You can see where the seven pin connection is there. And some SUVs, it's really buried under the bumper. We just had a Toyota RAV4 TRD Pro. That thing has a really annoying light hookup. Here on the Grand Cherokee, it's uh, fairly simple business as usual. Now we're bringing this trailer down and I'm very curious to see how much the Grand Cherokee here is gonna squat. Here we go. The I mean, it's kind of on uneven ground, but it does look fairly flat to me. All right, everybody, this is my very first time towing this trailer with the Grand Cherokee. And uh, I think we got to point out, so this is you know right around half of the Grand Cherokee's tow weight rating. And when you look at it that way, it doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're pulling a travel trailer, there's so much more uh, aerodynamics that come into play. So the second you got a travel trailer on, that thing is gonna get pushed around by the wind. So even though the numbers might not be kind of, you know, pushing the vehicle, uh, you need to keep that in mind. This will not tow the same as something like our flat deck trailer will. Now that said, how is it pulling here? Absolutely fine. Uh, I think we've both been impressed by just how confident this Grand Cherokee has been. Really didn't squat too much in the back. This is just a dead straight hitch, so no lift or drop required whatsoever. Um, and dynamically, it feels fine. The trailer's really not pushing me around very much. We're even on a gravel road right now where you might really start to feel it. So far, so good. What did you feel when you were over here, Dev? Well, I also want to mention that when it comes to pulling something like a travel trailer, the, the tires, the running gear, uh, meaning the axles and the hubs matter. And there are various grades of them. So when you're looking at a unit like this, you do want to ask the sales guy, you know, well, whose who's is the running gear? 
because some is better than others and you really feel it with this one not to mention uh, they've done a really nice job of balancing this trailer I think that's the first thing I get is um, there's no push pull there's no hobby horsing going on here and once again people say well you're only pulling half the weight that the Jeep is rated for however the thing that you always want to remember is it's not necessarily getting going that matters it's stopping and right now we don't have the electric trailer brakes on this unit activated because we don't have a controller so we're just using the brakes on the Jeep and straight up for that this thing is really doing well yeah it's actually pretty surprising and the trailer brake point you just brought up is an important one um, because in the world of SUVs you're just not gonna find standard trailer brakes. There's very few units or models these days that have a standard trailer brake, unlike pickup trucks, where I actually don't think there's any truck you could not get a trailer brake in. So it's definitely true to say that trucks come out of the factory, you know, a little more properly outfitted for towing. That said, there are a ton of aftermarket solutions for trailer brake controllers. And actually we can show you a pretty cool one right here. Most people are familiar with the, the wired under dash units. They've been around since forever. But I know that today there's also a more, shall we say, high tech version. So can you tell us what you got in your hand? Yeah, so we have a, what they call a cordless brake controller and it's, it's app based. So what you do is you plug this into your vehicle and then plug the trailer end in and then you pull the app up on your phone and now you have electric brakes in any vehicle. So there's no wires to be run, there's there's nothing, you don't have to hang anything underneath your dashboard. No, the only thing that you have to do is plug this in, download the app, and then once you have the app, open it up, uh, lock onto the, your, your wireless uh, brake controller, and start to use it. You may very well be going to your RV dealer and having to pick up those extras because it's not just about uh, comfort and safety, it's also the law. For instance, mirrors on your unit have to give you a clear view all the way down the side now typically the mirrors that come standard on an suv they won't do that you're going to have to get little mirror extenders and of course this comes the same thing with the trailer brake controller so the aftermarket in this case is your friend so i think the suv story really is maybe a little more work a couple extra dollars involved but uh, as we're showing you right now in terms of the actual comfort and confidence of towing out here on the road this thing is excellent and then the best part about getting the v6 in this grand cherokee is going to be your fuel economy every other engine in this grand cherokee is a v8 they're all thirsty so go for this v6 and then when you're running around empty around town you're going to get really reasonable fuel economy as well and we're also assuming that a lot of people who are looking at this is going well i already own an suv so you want to get out tow a travel trailer you don't right away have to go oh my god i gotta buy a fifty thousand dollar truck so i said there is no tow haul mode in this suv and once again that's something that's fairly common in suvs you know they don't set them up ready for that trailering but what there is here in the grand cherokee is a sport mode and while no they're not identical it's doing most of the same thing sport mode is holding my gears a lot longer it uh, makes my throttle tip in a little bit more aggressive so when you are really trying to take off with some weight it does a nice job and then what's maybe even more appreciated is as you come to a stop the downshifts are a little bit more aggressive in sport mode too so there is no tow haul mode here but you can kind of cheat the system if you want and put her over into sport mode now a little more just on the Grand Cherokee here itself. This is the North Edition, like I mentioned. So this thing is outfitted for the winter. We get heated, everything, but you also get the bigger touchscreen, the better uh, infotainment system, the better speakers. And I have to say that for one of the absolute oldest vehicles in the FCA portfolio, I think the Grand Cherokee has aged really well. Like it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a vehicle that's a decade old. This interior doesn't feel that old. And I think that's a testament to how it's designed, the material choices, everything. The dash is a little plasticky. Anyways, besides that, I've, I really think this has got to be one of the best 
old interiors still is for sale today. And this brings me to my last point. There is a brand new Grand Cherokee coming. And it's actually a whole new family of big SUVs up here. So we're gonna have the Grand Cherokee. Above it, you're gonna have the new Wagoneer. And then you're gonna have the Grand Wagoneer. Now the Grand Wagoneer, we're supposed to see a concept for that thing in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for a video on that. But just know that a brand new Grand Cherokee is coming and we're supposed to see it before the end of 2020. So in the coming months, we should have a sense for what the brand new Grand Cherokee is gonna look like. Uh, that said though, as old vehicles go, this one is really not showing its age. Let's talk about what this Grand Cherokee costs now and we'll look at the build sheet. So the North Edition is actually based on the Laredo 4x4. So our base price here in Canada is already 46745 There's all your base options. And now here's the North package, although again, here in Canada, it's called Customer Preferred Package 2BN, but that's exactly what it is. And what you're getting with this North package is better infotainment, the better speakers, and then all season, all terrain tires, which is a nice step up. Again, like I said, you delete the Laredo badge so it doesn't look like a Laredo anymore. You're getting the Quadratech 2 4x4 system, which is cool, a couple different off-road things. But then the most important parts are the front heated seats and the heated steering wheel. Yes, it's called the North Edition because it's designed for cold places. Now we have a couple other options, premium lighting, the trailer tow group, of course, which we're using today. A couple other things, bringing our total to $56,845. And you know what? These days, that actually feels like a pretty decent value for all of the stuff you're getting inside of this Grand Cherokee. Okay, we're back in the RV dealership now. Sadly, we got to return this EPRO. We didn't even get to go have a fun weekend with it. But anyways, it's a really great little unit, tows excellently, and I think it proves that you can get a lot of value in a unit that you don't need a big truck to tow. So everybody, that is it for this video. Why don't you go below, leave us a comment, let us know what you think of this Grand Cherokee. As always, while you're down there, hit like and hit subscribe and make sure you come back to the Truck King YouTube channel to see what we're testing next. See ya. Bye. Boom.